Um, one thing you said, uh, that mu music is not universal. I found that very, very interesting. Um, and with the, with the widespread of popular music all over the world, um, I find that there's many times a disconnect with more traditional older music. Like we listen to the, the notes and we're like, oh, that's off, that sounds off. And why would they use that note and that type of thing? And do you just see this as, as I wonder, problematic or just progression or just, you know, the way the world is? Like, what's your view on that? Yeah, I think, I mean, when it comes to world musics and stuff like that, especially since so much of our, so many of our relationships to these musics are also through those same commercial distributing agencies, like, you know, it's like a section in HMV or something like that, that it's very important, first of all, to, to complicate the difference between, for example, um, picking up some uh, type of world music in a record shop to uh, to experiencing it within like talking about like the local music of where somebody grew up or something like um, like for me I, like growing up in Springfield Missouri and my mom does folk music and hammer dulcimer and stuff like this there's a big difference between the way my mom plays it which is really fucked up but interesting in a nice way compared to when you buy a bluegrass record from a record shop or something like this or this kind of gap so I think for me, it's not so important that, um, or for me, what I mean to say is that this, I feel that the idea that, for example, all music must be important everywhere in the same way, it must be respected in the same way, that this is kind of like also a trap of, of humanist thinking, I think, where like everything becomes kind of conflated to the same level. And of course, um, when of course the real power dynamics around those intercontinental relationships are not equal at all. So in a way to kind of avoid that kind of propaganda of saying, hey, we're all equal and stuff, because the ideal of wanting to be equal is radically different from saying, hey, we are all equal, because we're totally not. I mean, the systems don't allow us to be. So I think rather than clouding that up with idealism, it's more important to then think about, oh, this music is really, you know, takes on a specific meaning in this context. And outside of that context, it takes on an, a radically different meaning in relation to usually like industrial distribution or something like this. And that was also something I was trying to get at with the DJ Sprinkles album was that house music, for me, had a very specific relationship to transgender sex work, HIV, AIDS activism, this sort of stuff. And that was completely lost in 2010 music distribution. So, so then the problem then becomes not so much how what's special about that music, but what's special about our relationship to that music in the place that we're listening to it right now. For me, that kind of becomes a more productive way to talk, to talk and think about music. So rather than trying to invest sounds themselves as some sort of magical uh, ethereal quality that can transcend time and space, because that sort of thinking in the end, I think, kind of the real power dynamics that need to be addressed, that need to be changed, that we would want to be changed. Yeah. <laughs>